Welcome back everyone. Today we're actually going to be starting into this. However, with this said, the way we're going to break this down basically is, and it won't really make sense for like actual playing the game, but we're going to go from the rest of this on, we're going to go into basically each little item. So we'll start by getting these. Even though we may not have the machine that they go in, we're going to actually make these as we go. Okay. With that said though, as we do, there's going to be some things that we're going to need that we'll need to make the machines or whatever for. So we'll also have where we get off on a little tangent just to build machines, things like that. But the idea of this from here on is we're going to try to go step by step each little item as we need it and just make it as we go through. So with that, let's get started. The very first one's going to be right in here. This is a uh, energy upgrade, basically. Works for certain machines. Uh, to do the energy upgrade, though, uh, you're going to need one of the four types. And all that you can use, and it kind of flows through them and all. If you go through them all, though, there's only one that actually makes sense to do because there's a crushed quartz right here, which the crushed quartz, any of these machines work, but the, man, uh, the manufacturer here is a duplicate machine that you'll need to do pulverized obsidian. So you'll need to do that. So the very start of things, we want to craft that machine, okay? which we can do straightforward and all this. However, if we craft the machine, then we're going to need power for it, to which case we're going to need a some form of power, okay? Uh, we can use this generator, you can use solar if you'd like, you can use all kinds of things, but you're going to need some form of generator in here, okay? And then, um, so we'll just kind of break into it from there and kind of step on that. You're also going to need a fuel source depending on the type. So like there's two or three types of generators that take items uh, solar cells work only during the day. You know, there's always a, a little disadvantage to the early fuel sources that you'll need. Anyway, we're going to basically cover a couple of the uh, generators that you can do, and we'll go from there. All right, so before you, you're going to see I've got a couple of I've got an array of different uh, generators here. Pitiful. There's a, a petrified, pitiful, a standard generator of uh, integrated dynamics. Uh, a solar combustion generator, a solar generator from a, uh, a mechanism, and train. Yeah, I realize. Sorry. And then the uh, nuclear craft uh, solar generator. Okay. Every one of these is craftable right now, for the most part. These are all basically your semi standard starting ones. A um, couple of things before the solar gets uh, going here because it is going to be daytime here soon. Now, notice this one uh, does 20 FE. Whereas this one does, it can hold a lot more, but it takes time to generate, okay? So the two solar ones, if solar is what you decide to go with, you'll notice it's nighttime right now. We're not getting power, okay? So just kind of a calling your attention to that. Of they will work. This one, of course, is just a standard normal one that you can do. This one takes a little more work, but it's completely buildable still. But it does have to rev up, basically. So they're basically about the same in terms of my opinions of what they're going to do for you, okay? Now, with that said, what I'm going to do is, with my uh, different generators, I'm going to pop in basically a piece of oak wood, okay? This is my pitiful generator. I'm sorry, this is my petrified generator, okay? This is my pitiful generator. This is my standard generator, okay? And then, same for this one my simple combustion generator. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to stand back and let all these go. Now while we're doing this, and we're just letting them kind of come out to what they're going to do, okay, the you'll notice I have two pitiful gener petrified generators here, okay? So the petrified, one of the reasons I'm calling your attention to it is you can actually feed this thing leaves, you can feed it trees, feed it whatever you want. And it works out pretty well, so it gives you something you can do with the leaves and all that. However, it's going to take it 20 seconds, uh, 24 seconds more to get to what it does, okay? So while that's doing that, we're going to discuss these, okay? So let's start down here. So our simple combustion generator for one one piece of wood basically is able to produce 6,000, okay? This one we can't actually see, so I had to build a battery for it so you can see what it actually produced. It also produced 6,000, okay? So these two basically be about the same and all that type of thing, okay? So just so you know what you get out of them for one log. This one, however, did almost double. Okay? Same for a petrified, almost double. 
So both of these, in my opinion, have like power for what I'm putting into it, give me a lot more. Okay. However, like I said, this one, I can feed leaves. You'll notice difference of log to leaf, but I don't have anything to do with leaves otherwise. So I could do that, uh, and it'll do okay. You could also feed it log uh, trees, and it'll produce and all that. Okay. Now, these all work with different type of things and all that. For the most part, you can use the same cabling and all that kind of thing with all of them. For the most part, not exactly 100%. But you'll notice this is the machine we're about to build here, okay? It takes 24,000 to fill it. So with these two, that's like six trees, okay? Or six logs, I should say. These are more like 12. So just depends on how you want to use your resources. It doesn't much matter because you're going to make plenty of trees. Or logs, I should say, you know, and all. If logs is what you choose to feed them. Um, there's one thing, though, which is this one here. You can feed it. Uh, a couple more things as well as the simple combustion you can feed them more things than just the logs so that's the advantage of them if you want to do uh, other types of forms of energy for me i just am always using logs or whatever because it's fairly easy from the get-go so and you'll notice it whenever it gets done with the uh, tree it is about the same as the leaves so you could feed it the leaves the trees whatever you want to do on that so anyway for me i'm starting with this pitiful one you can build whatever you want. One of the reasons I'm going with the pitiful one over the petrified one, though, is the build path, okay? The petrified one, I need plastic for, which means i got to build machines for that. Whereas the pitiful one, it's pretty straightforward. So I'll build that one instead and kind of go with that. Other than that, I'm going with, like, one of these solar options. But, again, this one takes... It's completely buildable, but you got to build a machine for it, and then it takes some time to build. Whereas this one... Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. This is just copper and stuff. So, anyway, I'm either going solar, which is what I would typically use as solar, or I'm going to go with the uh, pitiful. And in the course of this build, I'm going to start with the pitiful and we'll kind of go from there. Just so y'all know what I'm doing, but I wanted to lay out the options for y'all. One last little bit of business about how this uh, operates is you'll notice I built a second floor here now. So, just so y'all aren't confused on what's going on with how I'm operating things is... All this is going to link into my same little system here. What's going to be upstairs, though, is my trees are downstairs for the most part. And hopefully I'll just continue to go that way with them. The upstairs, though, is going to be my items. Okay, So there's going to be a lot of little items you collect as the game goes on. Um, good examples like these cables and the bone mill and things like that. that they don't exactly go back into storage chests. So you could you can take these right now without any storage chests attached. And you can kind of guide over everything. You'll notice nothing... The bone mill disappeared, and not much else did. Okay, so things like the storage cable, for example, are just going to hang around my inventory, or I could put them in a chest somewhere, you know, and they just kind of build up. So, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to start making folders for each little item that I need that way. Okay, once I've made a folder for it, then I can pop it into the actual chest, and I'll do that for each little thing. Now, for this good measure, we're going to split these in half just so you can see how they kind of work. Okay, or how this is all going to work. Okay, so once I have them in my storage chest, then I can actually go in here and I can look and see those items that are in the storage chest, okay? I can also see with everything, but I can actually search those items out. I can, I can just grab those on the fly, okay? I can also put them up on the fly. And you notice I've got like these here. I can just put them up at will. And I mean, I can do this from way over here, whatever I want to do. I can just grab the whole mess up and use what I need to put the whole mess back. Okay, So that's how I'm going to operate my items and all. Just, I just wanted to cover that so y'all aren't confused on how am I pulling items or whatever. It's all coming from the simple storage chest thing. I'm just linking into everything and all that. And as I go on, I, I'll uh, show you whenever I do it, I'm going to integrate uh, item conduits and things like that so that I can just pick, take stuff, throw it in chests, and it'll go back into this also. So anyway, that's should cover that pretty well. Okay, so from the get-go, we're going to need the uh, generator, basically, right? So we need the energy upgrade to do that. Again, we're going to need to create pulverized obsidian and crushed quartz, which we're going to need the, uh, this manufacturer for. Okay, so to make that machine, we can make the machine outright pretty well and all that, okay? But we need power for it. 
Um, I guess what we'll do is we'll make the machine first, and we'll kind of go from there. To make the machine, you're going to need the lead ingots, okay? The lead ingots we have not made yet, okay? You can't make outright lead. We can't do anything like that, okay? You can't make blocks of lead either, okay? But what you can do is you can make amber, okay? So lead amber, you can either craft it using other components, or if you have a lead tree already, you can just make it out right there too, which we do. So with this, we can use our little system here real quick. We just go in there, use our remote, make our lead amber, and we can make a bunch of these at once, provided we have enough material for it. But you can tell how much material you have just by going back here and seeing. It takes a combination of both of these, to which case we've got a lot. So I wouldn't recommend making too many of these unless you've got like a big project you're doing. I just deal with 64 at the beginning and all. And uh, we'll just pop those in our little uh, melter over here. Kind of let it do its job. It'll take a little while depending on things like the iron, for example. It's going to take longer and all. But if, if you get this thing with lava in it, it'll do a good job of breaking all this down. And then you can just, once, once you've got it, just make lead blocks of it. Ran out. Put more in. The other reason we're doing the amber is it gives you more material than just about any way to do it. It's almost uh, double or more, depending on the material. Whatever you change you get, you just put more in. Once you get your lead block, you can either go over and tear it down immediately, or I'm going to go add it to my system right now. I'm just going to come up here, get to my current tray, take a look inside. That one's actually full. So that just means we need to lay down another one. Make lead blocks have its own little folder. Put it in. And now you'll notice we can get lead blocks straight for three air also. We'll do the same thing for ingots and everything, little nuggets, the whole deal. So that's how we're going to do with lead blocks. But from now, for now on right now, we just needed lead ingots for our manufacturer. I think it's that part. Next part, we're going to need the actual flint, okay? So flint, we can get from gravel. Gravel, we can get from the gravel uh, tree. So we'll just go to here. Yeah, actually, we'll just make a whole stack of it. Why not? Okay, same thing with that. We, we'll go put it that in our chest and the whole deal. But since we're sitting here right now, we needed the flint which we can actually just make. That gets our lead flint and everything that way. Okay, next part we're going to need for this is the piston. See that? Because if you click here, it'll tell you what you're still missing. So that when we click on piston, you'll notice we already had stuff in the crafting spot there. It clears it automatically, providing we have a, a place for it. Notice the redstone goes away as well as everything else, okay? So, come in here, we need a piston. The one thing we're going to be lacking is the iron ingot. So we need to go craft iron pretty much the same way. So go in here, find our iron amber, make yourself a nice stack of that. Same thing that we do with lead, it just takes longer to melt that down. Make yourself a couple blocks of iron, put it in your chest system, you'll be free to go on that. Whichever ironing it's made, you need to now craft a piston. And that, just pull that on down, clear it. Go back in here, last part you need is this copper solenoid. So for the copper part of this, we're going to give you two options, okay? You can't, you don't have any copper yet. So you need to make copper amber, okay? Copper amber for the simplification start of this. We need we need to make a copper tree, but before we make a copper tree, we just need to get this project done right now, right? We're most way through, we just need copper. 
So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use our system to try to make copper, but we're going to miss the one middle part, which is the red sand. So red sand, go into it. Uh, you'll notice right here, no, right here, is sand with just some red dye. Red dye, just plant, and you'll notice one of these is red rose, which comes from a poppy. We have poppies. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that part. Okay, so grab yourself a poppy, which I have to have in my system. You actually don't even need a crafting table for this. You can just pop right in here again. Get your poppy right there, and it'll give you the option to make more if you want. Clear that, no big deal. It's like we're made of sand. Oh, well, where do we get sand? Oh, hmm. Oh, look, we can make sand right here. Right out of our system. Cool. We just made a batch of sand. Cool. And then, what was it? We take that, get some water, right? Well, I don't have a bucket. Where's my bucket? Oh. Mm. Hey, look, I put those in my system, too. You can see why I begin to like this system. Bucket. Red water. Go ahead and make yourself as many of those as you can. And then craft your red amber. Or your, I'm sorry, your copper amber. So one of the things you'll notice real quickly is you're going to need nine of those uh, copper ambers to make the wooden block of copper amber. Okay? Which basically is going to leave you uneven because it's going to leave you one ingot in there, which is why I said you also might want to make a copper tree. Okay? To do the copper tree, we're going to need a spruce sapling with one ingot of copper. Might as well use it to make the spruce tree. Or the, uh, to make the uh, copper sapling. The deal is, though, we're going to need that spruce sapling. The spruce sapling, we're going to need a petrified sapling to do so, and some water. So that's not a big deal. Let's go over here. Oh, look, there's my petrified. Okay, grab himself four of those, I believe, and uh, the bucket should do me nicely. There's my spruce saplings. Pop it down. There's my copper sapling, and I'm going to integrate both the spruce and the copper into my system here. Alright, once we have everything integrated in, we can then go ahead and make these solenoids. And finish our machine. Get your machine, what you want to do is pick out a nice spot within your base, somewhere in there. Keep in mind you're going to need power close to your machine, so when you plan this, plan for both machines, supply for materials, and your energy where it's going to be coming from. So if try to figure out a spot where you can kind of expand into that. I'm just going to kind of put it out right here, we'll see how this plays out. And uh, then you're going to be able to see the machine, and you're going to notice, yeah, Got the machine, we need power. One other thing real quick you can do that will uh, work with this better, because if you're like me, you're making big stacks of this stuff and you're just putting it in and melting it down and it's only holding like three. The bigger, later on we'll build a billiard or smelter so this won't be such an issue, but early on with this one, we can make a uh, couple little things that will make this way simpler. So one is we can build a hopper, okay? If we build a hopper, then we'll need a chest to put on top of it. What we can do with that is put our copper, put our hopper on top. Get our chest up there. We can just pop our stuff into there and it'll feed it automatically. Okay. The other thing we can do is, and you'll need to build like a little miniature wall just to be able to place this here real quick though. is you can build a redstone clock, okay? So the last simplification part of this, no, actually I take that back, not the last. Next to the last simplification part of this is to get you some duct that you can edit the, the, uh, the uh, materials out of here. So at some point this is going to be cleared. Once you've got it cleared, take 10 amber 
I mean, a tin, copper, take your choice of materials. It really doesn't matter, okay? What the deal is get yourself an ingot's worth in there, okay? Take yourself a piece of obsidian, pour that in, you're going to make some hardened glass. A couple different materials you can do this out of, not that big a deal. Once you get your hardened glass, Okay, go ahead and get another block of it. Come on, thing. That should be a block at some point there. There we go. Take your block, tear it down so that you get the ingots, and make yourself what's called an item duct, okay? Or an item transfer duct, either which way. You can get that out of there. You can attach these up, and then you can lead these to a chest. Like so. Once you've got that connected up to a chest, then you're going to want a servo. Okay? There's a couple of different classifications of servos you can do, but simple servo is just fine. Get your nuggets. There you go. Now you get a servo. Servo, what you do is you go, where am I coming from? Turn it on, and then, then you decide where you're going to push it to. Last little part you're going to want of all this is going to be, you're going to want a wrench to be able to adjust with what the pipes does. So the wrench is in here too. Crescent hammer, that's what they're calling it. It's just a wrench, okay? Thermal foundation. And it's fairly straightforward. Piece of iron, tin, couple of iron. Once you've got that, you just decide which side you don't want. Give it a nice right click, and that'll handle that. It makes it fairly simple on how to deal with all this. And while, we'll be, while we're being crazy with everything else, what I usually will do at this point is I'm going to have a couple of folders that are starting to build up, like this one will be tin, I've got my cobblestone over here, I've got a couple of little things like that. So what I'll do is I'll pick me a central location for storage, like that will work pretty well. And then what I'll do is I'll create myself a transfer system to move everything to it, okay? You basically can do that. There's this item transfer node you can build. And I'll build you one of those, basically. There we go. And we just place it wherever we want to, items to come from. Once you have your transfer node down in place, which you'll notice I even put it in place of the actual chest itself. So it'll just collect just like anything else in terms of the items that you get. They'll just come right into there. Okay? But then you're going to need a GPS coordinate for it to transfer to, which is why I placed the chest down somewhere over here. So we're going to make our GPS unit real quick. And yeah, need lapis. Lapis block. Right there. Just make ourselves a nice big stack of it. There we go. That gets me the GPS unit. The way you use the GPS unit is you decide where you want to go with it. Do a shift right click. That place is blocked, you'll notice. And then you can go walk over to here, open the device, and put it in. You'll notice the items disappeared. You can also, if you want, you can preview where it's going to send them just in case you're not 100% sure what it's going to do. 
And you'll notice they're over here now. So basically I can do that with any of the manufactured things, such as my cobblestone here. I can get it to all transfer in, and then all i got to do is on occasion walk over here, pick up everything in it, provided I have a place in my chest for it, I can just right click. You notice lapis and iron I don't have integrated yet, but everything else I pretty much do. Next one I need is the iron gears. I'm going to need the machine case. Oh, see, yeah. Yeah, integrate those. More iron. Block of redstone. my machine case and a furnace and there's our generator okay once you've got the generator placed it's you know relatively close doesn't have to be touching or anything um, then you're going to need a way to transfer the energy so first off, you're going to need the energy, to which case uh, we should be able to just do that with wood, I believe. See, that's what I was using on this one. Yep, so that's going to start making energy here. Once you get the energy coming, then you're going to need a way to transfer it over, though. So you make some of this uh, lithium fluxy duct. It's under thermal dynamics. Fairly straightforward. You've got everything for it already, or should have. Make yourself a good batch of that. You'll get six of these per. All you do is connect it back endwise, and it should start transferring energy over. Okay, so once we've got the machines made, we can actually start on the achievement we were after, which was to make the energy upgrade. So for the energy upgrade, a couple of things first. The obsidian, the quartz, and the weighted pressure blades. The quartz we can go ahead and start on because it's just quartz. But the obsidian we're going to have to make, and the pressure plates we can just make. So let's just make the pressure plates real quick here, okay? There, they're like easy. Pressure plates, just make yourself a batch of those, make yourself more gold, get the pressure plates all you need. Then we can start on the uh, obsidian, in which case uh, we just need to get some quartz, which is right there. And we start that crushing right away. So once that's done crafting, I've got now the uh, uh, pulverized obsidian, I've got the crushed quartz, and I've got the wage pressure plates. Now I can build this guy. Now it helps if I use the uh, machine. Build this guy. And that gets my achievement done. Okay, next achievement would be your speed upgrade. To which case, lapis redstone, weighted pressure plates. Fairly simple. Should have the lapis blocks already. Redstone's next. And the way to pressure plates. And there's our speed upgrade. And since we've made both of those, we might as well use them, right? Yeah, ah, I'm going to go right in here. Okay, next part of the achievements is to build the speed up right here. This is a little different one, of course, with the mechanism ones. The uh, fun deal of that one now is to build it. Okay, this is straightforward glass, but we need... Oh, what is this stuff? Osmium. Huh, osmium. Guess what? I need a new tree. Yeah, so we got to build the tree. Well, same thing here. Tree, we need, we need the amber so that we can uh, make it. We do the casting. It's a mineral. We'll do it osmium this time. That comes from the uh, ore that we're going to melt down right here with the amber. So we're going to have to create the amber. But our system makes that a nice little breeze. 
And we got a whole stack of it. So we take our amber, put it up top, let it do its thing. It starts making that. We need to get a mineral tree, which is what it tells us we need. So again, we go in our little system, grab ourselves a mineral tree, put it in our table. We will go integrate this one in the system and then we'll have that one ready to be able to use. Okay, so at this point, trying to make the speed upgrade still. We have our glass already. We have our dust now. Well, we don't have the dust made, but we can make the dust. Let's go ahead and make the dust. Just grab us a deal of it. Just throw it in there. That'll make our dust. So the last part we need is the enriched alloys. We see enriched alloys is going to need a machine to do this, to which case we need to build this machine right here. So this one we can do because we already just made those. We need to make two furnaces. A little more iron. More furnaces out there for now. A little more iron, and that'll do it. Same thing with the other machine, we'll put it down. We're gonna need a little more duct. Connect it up, it gets energy now, and we'll be ready to go. It works is it'll tell you pretty much what you need. So you're gonna need redstone and iron. So go ahead and let's go get some redstone and iron here. There we go. Now it's going to be a, and it'll tell you in the build here too, it'll pretty much tell you it's one for one. So that means if I need two of these, I need to load two redstone in there. That's going to give me 20 redstone and two iron in there. And as you can see, that yeah, makes the alloys. Once the alloys are done, we can then at that point go into our system and build our speed upgrade. And that completes that achievement. The part is this muffling part, in which case that one's mostly easy. The uh, alloys we just went over how to do, we've already got the last. The difference is this still blend here, okay? So the still blend is iron and coal. Uh, if you have a uh, smeltery already built, you can just use that and do that real easy. However, I don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this infuser, which I also give you, and I can just cut coal and iron and do it that way. There's my still blend. And there's my muffling unit, which completes that upgrade, that uh, achievement. And the last little achievement for that is the energy upgrade. We need energy upgrade, uh, again with the alloys, again with the glass, but we need pulverized gold. So we'll need a piece of gold. Go back to our manufacturer, crush a piece of gold. There we go, and that should allow us to, well, it helps if I click on the right thing here, people. That gets our energy upgrade. And that gets that achievement. That's going to call it for this video. We'll continue on going down this path. We had uh, Tinkers coming up next is what it looks like. And uh, that'll be a whole different adventure. It's kind of an interesting fun. But uh, that'll call it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the little notification bell for whenever I release new updates and videos. And uh, y'all have a good one. Thanks.